Hi everybody, this is Derek McKay and behind the camera is Melissa. Hi guys! And today we're doing our houseplant series and we're covering a kind of a bigger issue. We're going to cover pests and we're going to cover specifically mealybugs. So the first thing I'm going to say is if you ever have a pest, and really it's not a matter of if, it's when, especially if you have a larger collection of houseplants. I can even say that I've had houseplants for a long, long time and I've had at least a pest issue or two pop up. I just wanted to let you know it's not the end of the world and not to freak out too much. It's okay to be a little bit concerned, but I promise you there's ways to get it done and taken care of and that's what we're going to show you in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you the mealybug. So I'm going to have Melissa zoom in. During our weekly pest checks, I found some mealybug on some succulents and there are plants that are that's so big to have mealybug it seems like. And one of them is succulents, meaning what I mean by I say that is it's very prone to mealy bug and another one is to watch out for is hoyas and some of the other tropicals as well they kind of go over a wide range but those two are kind of the biggest ones you think melissa yeah the hoyas yeah. and the succulents yep those are the ones we keep a super close eye on for sure yeah so just kind of keep up keep a close eye on those two and just so you know the time frame they come out the most it seems like the end of june july and august they're really really popular and they really start to ramp down in september and october so the summer months are the big ones to take care of, but they can pop up any time. That's just the biggest months to watch out for. Can you tell people how they might get them? Yes, of course. So I just wanted to let you know that they start out very small. And I mean, like they're hard to see. And they start out in a crawler stage where they're very mobile. They can come from outside, literally from an open window, even with a screen. They can actually come right through the screen. They can come through an open door. They can come on your clothes if you're at a place where there's mealybugs because they're out in the natural environment. So they're out in your garden, in your lawn, up in the trees. And we just had the mealybugs raining down in my yard from the sugar maple because they're at that stage. So they can come right from outside and they can also come from garden centers and things like that, which is why quarantine I quarantining excuse me, is very important. Um, so that's kind of where they can come from. How long do you recommend somebody quarantine a plant when they bring it home from a garden center? I would really honestly do it for two to three weeks and just keep an eye on it. If you don't see anything after that two to three weeks, it should be good to go out in the population. If something pops up, you can use the steps that I'm going to show you here shortly to get it taken care of. Okay. So there's the mealybug. You can see it right it's on the tips of the leaves. Those white, that white fuzzy. So if you see that stuff, that almost looks like a cotton tip. Looks like there's some yep. there and there's some there. And I did want to point out that they like to hang out, especially under the leaves, deep in the plant. So just really look hard when you do this. Okay. So the first thing you'll want to do is we have rubbing alcohol. That is the one of the best treatments that I still find today to get it taken care of. And I always start with this method. Yep, me too. So I will take a cotton swab, which I have here, and I just fill the cap full of rubbing alcohol, dip it in really good, and I take the plant, I'm going to move it a little closer, and I will, you can see what's happening, it's already starting to turn colors, and I'll usually have a paper towel and I'll wipe it off on the paper towel, and I'm going to get all those two until they're all the way gone and off that plant. You can actually see them on the cotton swab now, those are the actual bugs. They form that waxy material that makes them white in an effort to keep them protected from the elements. So you're just kind of painting this down and getting the leaf wet wherever they're at, cleaning them off. Yeah, and then I really look at it and I check all those like deep areas to make sure there's no more. And some of this is water spotting where we have hard water here and, and it kind of stains the leaves a little bit. So I have to kind of see which is which. But that's all that I see on that one. So that plant is considered treated at this stage, but I'm still going to do a couple more things to it. So that's kind of the first part of it. The second is I've got some neem oil that you can get here. We have this in stock and I will spray the whole plant in that. And the more methods that you use, the better. There's still another one you can even try. Um, the granules, the systemic. The only thing about the systemic though is that it takes two weeks to start being active in the soil. So if you're using that, it's not going to start working for two weeks. This stuff, the neem oil, works right away and so does the rubbing alcohol. So the rubbing alcohol kills them, so I'll make sure they're all gone. But there's still a chance that the really small ones that are almost invisible to the naked eye could still be hanging out in there. And that's where you get into the situation where you keep getting re-pop-ups. 
I know people yep. have seen that before. Yep. So you'll want to keep doing these two methods, but this should help with it. Treat with that, then treat with that right afterwards. And you may have to do that, those two methods again. So I would keep that plant quarantined for the three weeks, just like as if it was a new plant at this stage. And then keep doing those two methods until they're gone. Um, sometimes it could take up to three times, but I would be surprised if it's more than that. Does that sound? Yep, sounds about right from what I've experienced at my own house too. <laughs> I think, I mean, all on my list here, it looks like I covered most things about it. Is there something you think I'm missing? I think you were gonna um, show oh, a yeah, little bit more, about yeah. like how to actually search and check their plants over. Yeah, so I, uh. I was gonna show that. So this one here, they can see, even though this isn't a succulent or a hoya, like I said, they go on a lot of different plants. So, I just was going to show you how on a tropical like this, this plant is clean, but I wanted to show that they can really hang out down here. They like to hang out at the bottom. So not so much up here, but every once in a while they will down in the middles, yep. but they really like to hang out in the center. So if I'm looking, I'm going to part and look at every little, especially the new growth, because that's where they like it the most. And this is kind of what you do when you're doing our weekly inspections on all of our plants. Yes, I yes. go through and I there's like a three point, I pick the plant up, look around the bottom, and then I part the leaves and make sure they're clean in there and go real deep. And then I check the upper leaves as the third point and check underneath. That's kind of my way of checking it. I do this every week. And there's this a is a great section. way too, just to catch any type of pest early on if you give your plant a good inspection like that. Yes, that's true. So, so I that you can avoid some of those problems too if you know before a population of pests would get out of control. Yeah, because right? you you want to get it early, honestly. Yes. And then on this one it is a here's the what's this one? Pep peperomia. peperomia. Yeah, peperomia. That's it. And you want to make it's again, it's always gonna be with this one it's always gonna be in the center. And sometimes on these they'll hang out up on in this. The crevices and uh, stuff this too, is the right? flower of a peperomia, by the way, if you ever wonder that what cool? that was. I know. But they'll hang out up there too. And then Hoya, it's mostly from what I've seen way down underneath in so the leaves. Yeah, the undersides too, on the you're new, always wanting to check. On the, the new, new vines. Growth. Yeah, so. that's kind of the main thing. Another one that I was gonna, I didn't actually, oh yeah, I did. I wanted to just kind of show something to help with pests too is we have baby wipes, yep. just like regular old baby wipes from the store. And one thing you can do is if you wipe the plant down while you're pest checking, just like that, if there happens to be a pest, it'll kind of help keep them away. Like yep. for example, another one you might deal with a spider mite. If you just do that, let's say you do your weekly pest check and you wipe these leaves down a little bit, it'll clean the plant up and make it look prettier. Yep. And, and this is really, think about how, if we can use it on babies, think yep. about how nice and easy that is on the plant it's not yeah. too harsh so it'll clean the plant up keep pests away so that's kind of in that realm of the treatment but so okay. always have some of those handy would they do. also be able to just give their plants like a little shower does that help too to yeah stick them in the shower clean off leaves that way because pests like to hang out on dry plants that really c accumulate a lot of dust and stuff like that so if you can mist them in the shower or in the sink or a spray bottle it ke helps keep the plants leaves cleaner they breathe better and it, it just helps keep pests away. So that's something, if you're wanting something to do to help keep pests away, something you can do proactively, I would say that's actually one of the best bets. Awesome, thanks for sharing that tip. You're welcome. Now I think I've covered it all, right? Yep. Okay, so with that, we're gonna end it here and we will see you in the next video. See ya.